This is to date the nicest bike we have ever bought on Flip Bike, but it needs work and I might have overpaid for it. Let's take a look at it. It was $750, listed at $850, mind you. It is a size small. Small men, women, and kids are all looking for size small, and they are in short supply. I think $750 is a good price for this. It's got really good Fox suspension. It's got through axles, a Dior XT drivetrain, hydraulic disc brakes, internal cable routing, it's dropper post ready. These would have been pretty cutting edge features back in 2013. And although this bike has been used really hard, there's not much evidence of major crashes. It's just been ridden a lot of miles with very long service intervals. And there are certain indicators around the bike, like the way this quick release was secured and this inner tube shim on the handlebars, that this bike has never seen a torque wrench, probably has the original bearings and the linkage. And we can safely assume the suspension was last serviced a really long time ago. My friends, we have a lot of work to do. break something. Oh my God. I am going to snap this. Oh, got it. I know who's getting this bike. It's the daughter of a family friend. She's only five feet tall. And so a small adult bike with 26 inch wheels is actually a pretty good fit. And there's nothing wrong with this bike that I can't repair. The whole bike is apart now, so I have to clean everything. The drivetrain parts, the nuts, bolts, suspension, get all the dirt off of it. And then we're gonna get into the hairy stuff, servicing the suspension and putting the linkage back together, pressing new bearings in there. So here's an interesting thought. We can only assume that occasionally the previous owner of the bike sees this video and maybe they feel some kind of embarrassment because they didn't get the suspension service. They didn't take care of it the way you're supposed to. Uh, the opposite is somebody who just works on their bike all the time and never rides it. And so by the looks of this bike, it had a pretty good life with its previous owner, saw a lot of time on the trails and just not a lot of time being wrenched on. For a 10 year old fork, this is in superb condition. Let's see if the inside is. I think at some point this bike was sitting for a really long time because I'm not finding anything that's super dirty or worn. It's just dry. None of my bikes have 32 millimeter stanchions and so I don't have a seal driver for one. I'm 3D printing one. So most of the hairy stuff is done. We've replaced all the linkage bearings. We put all the linkage back together, installed the rear shock, replaced the headset, and installed the fork. I even installed a new stem and handlebars, those old carbon ones. I don't know what they've been through, and my main priority is safety. 
But before we put the rest of the bike together, there are a few little things we need to sort out. For example, what drivetrain are we gonna put on this? I have a whole bunch of SRAM stuff and this rear wheel does not have a SRAM free hub body. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what these are, Bontrager hubs or something. I actually had a SRAM XD free hub driver that fit this wheel. And so now I have a really good drivetrain option for this bike, should be perfect. These rotors have plenty of life left in them. I just gotta clean them up really good and give them a light sanding. So these wheels are actually tubeless ready. We could easily go tubeless here, but I'm not going to. It's easier to install valves and put in sealant than to clean out a bunch of sealant and go back to inner tubes. And so I'm gonna let them make that decision. Maybe I'm nitpicking. This factory brake hose is just a tad too long. I can't unsee it, and so let's shorten it. I just had a whole wrench thrown into my operation. That SRAM free hub body sits too close to the frame. And so we're putting the Shimano one back on and installing this Box One drivetrain. Super expensive and super low gear for a 26 inch wheel. If she's ever in the lowest gear on this thing, you know it's been a rough day. So the bike came with these pedals and they are perfectly fine. All I have to do is clean them up, but we've already spent a whole bunch on this bike. Let's just, just overkill. All right, I gotta clean my shop and then we should stare at this thing. So Grace's school actually has a really good mountain bike trail system built by Elevated Trail Design. She's gonna have everything she needs and some really smooth suspension. And we did go way overboard on that bike. It did not need a new saddle. The derailleur we probably could have reused and even the stem and bars probably didn't need to be replaced but we did have fun with it. And so if you bought that bike for $750 and only did to it what was necessary to make it capable, what would it cost? Linkage definitely needed an overhaul. We'll call that 20 bucks for bearings. The cassette and chain rings were worn, really worn. We could have converted that into a one by with a narrow wide chain ring and a 42 tooth cassette for about a hundred bucks. Suspension service, front and rear, call that $70 for kits and fluids. Flush and refill the brakes, change the pads, call that $20. The tires were pretty worn, decent set will cost you about a hundred bucks. Installing a dropper post is not essential for everybody, but it is for me, and so 150 bucks for that. And then new cables, hardware, miscellaneous items, we'll call that 20 bucks. So $480 invested into a $750 bike, that's $1,230. Doesn't seem that bad, but right now, 
there are crazy deals on new bikes. You can get a Marin Rift for $1,200. And at that sale price, it's honestly a really tough call. I'll tell you this though, the Rift would be close to four pounds heavier. It would not have a dropper post and the suspension wouldn't be nearly as good. That 10 year old Fox suspension was really high end and it works a lot smoother than let's say a RockShox Recon. But the Rift would be brand new and so in this market, it's getting pretty hard to justify fixing up used bikes. But this market is not going to last forever and so right now, it's a pretty good time to buy a new or used bike. Pretty terrible time to try and make a profit on one, but if you guys are okay with me fixing up bikes and putting them back on the trail, not paying too much attention to profit, we can keep doing this until the market returns to normal. If you like this video, we have a whole flip bike playlist you can binge watch. I hope you found this content enriching. I hope you learned something, and if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Oh, he got it.